Hi learners, my name is Chicha Mary once again. We are doing a lot of revision. So today we'll be looking at oral narratives. We are still concentrating on the power, don't forget that. So let me ask you, what is an oral narrative? From the word oral, word of mouth, a narrative is a tale, a story. So this is basically a story, a story, okay, told by word of mouth word of word of mouth a story told by word of mouth okay any story told by word of mouth and fortunately we come from every religion every anything or any community yeah uh, we come from a background that we love stories so through stories we learn through stories we entertain through stories we we interact with people you know other people's diversity their culture you appreciate their culture way of dressing you know a lot of things their skin color their food through stories we travel it is the cheapest way of traveling through stories i can go to asia i can go to europe you know through stories so a story is i mean a narrative sorry is a story told by word of mouth so we will look at so many types of stories that are usually tested uh, or you need to know because they'll be tested so we will look at i uh, will just list them down for now we will list them down then we'll discuss them together the first one is a myth the first one is a myth the first one is a myth okay yeah the second one try and guess which one I don't know if you guessed it right, but legend, legend, okay, legend. The third one we have is a trickster narrative. This one, I'm so sure most of us have, have had it. Or our parents and our great, great parents or grandparents told it to us many times. I tell it a lot to my kids. Um, then the fourth one we have explanatory 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 or it has two names or ideological narrative ideological narrative ideo ideological ideological narrative okay then that is number four Number five, do not worry, we'll still have enough space here. Uh, we have um, ogre stories, ogre stories or monster stories. You can choose, okay? Then the sixth one, we have fables, 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 okay? Fables. So then there's one, I don't like... Um, I don't like bringing it up because you'll realize as you discuss why I do not like bringing it up. We call them human tales. I will not write it. We call it human tales. The reason why I don't like bringing it up because if you see, most of these uh, stories involve humans. So we can't exclusively say human tales. But uh, let me, for the sake of discussions and for the sake of you not blaming me, I don't want you to blame me. I will just write it there and we'll discuss it as well. So let's come together and try to discuss or uh, define or understand the definitions and the characteristics of these stories or oral narratives that you have just written. Okay? So please get a paper and pen. I will do a lot of dictation. We will not be writing. Are you ready? A myth. A myth. The first one is a myth. A myth is a story that explains the origin of a people or a natural phenomena. Okay? I will repeat. A myth is a story that explains the origin of a people, where people came from. Okay? Or a natural phenomena, like maybe a mountain or a lake. And an example of a myth is... Um, the, the Agekoyo and Mumbi, the Kikuyu community, how they're trying to explain where they came from. 
okay? Or also we can go back to the local community. Uh, there's a lake, a very salty lake, uh, somewhere, even now if you go, it's somewhere in Kindu Bay. Kindu Bay, it's a salty lake, it's called Lake Kanyaboli. So there's a myth behind it as well, explaining how it came to be. So basically that is what a myth is, okay? It explains the origin. So any story you see that is trying to explain where something came from or how something came to be or how people came to exist, just know that that is a myth. Then let's go to a legend, okay? It involves a person with supernatural ability, okay? So let's say maybe, uh, I'll give you an example, uh, an example of a legend, apart from the movies that I'm sure you guys watch, like Legend of the Seeker and things like that. We are going to look at um, Luanda Magere. Luanda Magere in the Luo community, this was a legend. He was a legend. It is believed that his body was made of stone. So you can see the supernatural abilities. Yeah. Or if you're a Christian, you know who, um, what was his name? Samson? Yeah, Samson. Samson. Was it Samson? Yeah, Samson, yeah. Samson who had his power stored in his hair. So that is a legend. He was a legend in his community. His hair had his powers. So when Delilah shaved his hair and uh, everything just crumbled down. So that is what a legend is, a very good example of what a legend is. Then you come to a trickster from the word trick from the word trick. And I'm sure when you're younger, in your younger days, you read stories of the hare and the elephant or the hare or the tortoise and what else? It used to be hyena and, you know, such kind of stories. And you'd see how unfortunately the bigger animal would be tricked by the smaller animal. Yeah? So that is what you call a trickster story. A trickster story many a times, not every time, the small animal tricks the big animal. So you can find the hare or the rabbit tricking the elephant, yeah? But sometimes it doesn't have to be that way because there's an exam I was marking and uh, it was a trickster story. However, there was no any small animal. So any, any part, even human beings do trick each other. So if you see any trickery or any false play being played, please remember that that is a trickster narrative. Any story that involves someone or an animal being tricked, that is a trickster story. So the one tricking, we call them trickster. And the one being tricked, we call them dupe. It was tested. So please remember that. The one tricking, we call him or her dupe. D-U-P-E. Okay, the one that is a fool. That one. Then, this is my favorite. I used to love this. Explanatory stories or ideological stories. The why stories, how I like to call them. The why stories. They explain why a certain animal does this. For example, it will explain why the snake crawls. Or it will also explain why the hen or the chicken always is looking for something on the ground. It will explain why. Why human beings have two limbs and two hands and they don't walk on their paws. It will explain why. So I, I call them why why stories, but that is not the correct thing. It is what to ensure that you remember in an exam setup or even when you're just discussing it with anyone. An explanatory story or a theological story. Then we come here. The monster! The ogre! Okay? And I'm sure you've read this book where an ogre had a third eye an ogre had that eye here, the third eye on his forehead, and he would trick little babies that went to the forest alone or that didn't even listen to their parents. You know, narratives. This is what makes life reward. So an ogre story or monster stories. People fear monsters. And this is a story that involves a, a weird creature. 
okay? A creature that has special features that not no, that are not normal to the human eye. Maybe they're so gigantic, they're so tall, okay? Or they have an extra tongue, they have three ears, or you know, something just crazy, something just weird. But as always, there's always a moral lesson that it teaches us as we read. Then fables. Fables, these are stories that involve strictly, strictly animals. And these animals have the ability of human beings. These animals can talk, can cook, can hold a ceremony, can do everything that a human being does. But strictly, they are animals. And I will advise you read this story. It's called The Animal Farm by George Orwell. Try and read it. That is a, it's a, it's a great story. It's a story and it's a fable. You will see how every animal is given its own characteristics and how they rule the snowball and things like that. You will see. I will not tell you. And so many stories that I'm sure. I know you know this, a fable like Shamba Lawanyama. It's a story that even my own grandparent read it and you're not an exception. Then this one, the one that I do want us to discuss, we'll still discuss it. Just like fables, strictly animals, human children are strictly human beings. No other creatures are involved. Okay? So, dear Dana, basically, we have discussed and we have looked into all the types of narratives and their characteristics and what makes them special. Do not forget myth explaining where something came from. Legend, there's a hero. Kumuka, just trying to remember. There's a hero. Trickster from the word trick, that person that is being tricked. And the, the one that is being tricked, we call him a dupe. Explanatory, why stories? Ogre, <coughs> monster. Fable, strictly animals. Human children, strictly humans. And I was your teacher, Miss Mary, until next time.